everyone, welcome back to The Tech Twins, a YouTube channel we created as UC Berkeley students trying to help you get jobs in the tech industry. Today, we'll be talking about how to ace a job interview at a tech company. Make sure to watch until the end of the video for all of our tips and tricks, and today we'll be talking about internships specifically since that's what we have experience with, and we'll be drawing upon our experiences as interns at Apple, Tesla, and Microsoft but upon having conversations with some of our peers who have interned at other companies like Facebook and Google, we know that these tips apply to many tech companies, especially the major ones, so let's just dive right in. So to give a little bit of background on the interview process, when you're interviewing at a tech company, you should have two main goals. First, prove that you have the skills to be able to complete the job, but then second, show that you're likable enough to work with, and a lot of companies call this culture fit and it's often represented in how well your manager feels like they mesh with you when you have an interview. There are a lot of different positions at tech companies, so first it's important to understand what type of position you're interviewing for. And once you understand what type of position that is, you can best prepare for the different types of interviews. There are typically two types of interviews, technical and behavioral interviews. A technical interview will generally try to test your technical skills. If you're trying to do a software engineering role, a helpful book for the technical part of the interview is cracking the coding interview. If you're trying to do a mechanical engineering role, it's important to know the basics of beam bending and materials. But in technical interviews, they can also throw in some brain teasers. So for example, in one of my mechanical engineering interviews, when I was in my sophomore year of college, I got asked a couple brain teasers. One of them was, if you have a rope that wraps around the equator of the earth, and at each point of the world, you, at each point of the rope, you raise that rope, by one meter, how much has the length of that rope changed? So it's not mechanical engineering specific, but it is logic based and it's kind of tricky. So they can throw that in there, even if it's not specifically related to the role. The other type of interview is a behavioral interview where typically the questions asked will not be about anything that's technical in nature, but more leadership based or questions about different projects that you've done things that are on your resume, uh, and our Career Center has a really great list of common behavioral questions, so we'll link that in the description below, uh, and you can go through those. Typically, some people see this part of the interview as the easier part, but you still need to prepare for it, otherwise you're not going to do well, so definitely take a look at that list. There are three steps to acing the interview. What you do before the interview, how you perform during the interview, and how you follow up after the interview. So before the interview, you'll most definitely have the name of your interviewer. And once you have that person's name, go on LinkedIn, go on private mode, just go open an incognito browser and search up that person's name, followed by the word LinkedIn, and f try to find out more about that person. And knowing this background experience is really helpful because it gives you an understanding of where they're coming from when they're asking you the questions in the interview. Typically there is some freedom for the interviewer to ask some questions that they want, so this is some sort of way to anticipate those questions and give you a better shot at getting past that interview. So you can also look for articles and videos about the person interviewing you. Most commonly those won't be online, but sometimes they are and they're also really helpful. But the main thing that we do in preparing for interviews is we always make a master Google Doc and compile all this information that we find online, starting with background information about the interviewer and going all the way to questions that you anticipate you might be asked. So how might you get access to these questions? If you go on Glassdoor and just Google Glassdoor mechanical design intern at X company, most likely it'll come up with an interview section of Glassdoor and it'll show you a list of questions that you can get asked. Uh, our previous people have been asked in the interview, pay information and things like that. And from our experience, they're very accurate, so you can compile those in your Google Doc and before the interview, interview, think of ways that you would answer those questions. And particularly for behavioral questions, we use the STAR method because it helps you organize your thoughts and show exactly what happened, what you did to make the change, and what the result was. And so STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result, and we'll link more information in the description below so you can read all about it. The next step is acing the actual interview, so what you do during the interview. There are three things that you should be. You should be confident, authentic, and enthusiastic about the role. You want to make sure that you convey that you can do the role, but that you would also fit into the team environment and not disrupt this kind of dynamic that they already have. There should be a balance between you talking about yourself and your experiences and you wanting to learn about the interviewer and their experience. During the interview, make sure to try to build a personal connection with the interviewer. 
because that's how they'll remember you in the future. So one way that we do this is try to find some point of connection. And this can be a shared hobby, a shared major at a school, a shared cultural background, um, a shared favorite type of food, really anything that can make you memorable. Sometimes I've been in an interview and they've said that, oh, they're an identical twin too. So that's a really memorable way to help your interview stand out from the rest and help you get to that next stage of the process. Once your interview is physically over, the process is not over yet. You always need to send a follow-up email saying thank you and talking about key points that you enjoyed in your conversation. A good test is if you can send that same email to another person and just replace their name and it would still make sense, then that's not effective. You should go back to the drawing board and rewrite your email. Your email does not need to be long, something like three sentences that just gets the point across that says like i really enjoyed speaking with you thank you for your time i've enjoyed hearing about your experience doing x and this company because i did this similar project in my experience so always trying to tie it back to you and then that you're looking forward to hearing from them soon about next steps in the process this is also a really good way to go back to that point of staying memorable um, because a lot of people actually don't send a follow-up email even though you might have heard everyone say you need to send a follow-up email after your interview. Exactly, and even if you don't have the specific email address of your interviewer for confidentiality reasons, you can always still send your recruiter or whoever coordinated your interview an email and ask them to pass along your message to your interviewer. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching our video. We hope this was useful sharing insights that we've gained from interviewing at tech companies and hopefully these will help you get a job at a tech company that you really like. Subscribe, like this video, comment with any questions you have, and we'll see you next week.